Hey guys, what welcome, up? welcome, welcome. We are here, and as promised, we are doing the history of the Arsenal Football Club here in we go. the Premier League. All right. Um, yeah, man. So this is just a brief history. This is a video that we found. We typed in Arsenal Football Club history, and this popped up. So let's let's see what this guy has to say. Uh, this is going to be one in a series of twenty. Let's do so it, man. So let's just dive down and let's let's see. Where am I? I'm over there. The mouse is over there. There you go. There, there we you go. go. And let's go in. Soccer Tavern, where we're discussing the history, culture, and philosophy of the beautiful game. My name is Dave, and in this series of videos, we're discussing the history of soccer clubs around the world. Next up, Arsenal Football Club. Pull up a seat and let's start the discussion. All right. Arsenal FC is located in the northern part of the City of London. The City of London is located in the southern central part of England in the United Kingdom. Arsenal currently play in the Premier League. The club's home ground is called the Emirates Stadium, which opened in 2006 and holds 60,432 people. All right. Arsenal was founded in late 1886 when a group of workers from the Woolwich Arsenal Armament Factory in South London decided to form a soccer team. They called themselves Dial Square as a reference to the sundial atop the entrance to their factory. The club name was soon changed to Royal Arsenal, though when the club turned professional in 1891, the name changed yet Dude. again to Woolwich Arsenal. Let me. The let club me just didn't do have an established home for the first 20. 1891. That's crazy. That's a long time. That's a long time. You know, and that's something that we noticed that even over on Embrace the Suck 21, like. Everyone would comment, this team is so old. This team is so old and, and, and has so much history. And I didn't know that these teams existed that long ago. Yeah, it's, That's they're old. Wild. I couldn't imagine an NFL team being that old. Yeah, yeah, because the NFL isn't as old as, yeah. you know, a lot of these clubs. Uh-uh. Yeah. I think we just celebrated our, what, 150th? No, not 150th. 100th year? 100th year? Of what? Football, NFL. Uh, NFL? Or oh, it's like got to be younger 60, than that. It's 60 or 70. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Seven years of their existence as they bounced around the Plumstead area of South London. In 1913, the club was relegated to the second division and was suffering financial issues. At that time, Sir Henry Norris came to the club's rescue. Sir Henry acquired Arsenal and decided that there was greater potential for the team in North London. He moved them to the Highbury section of London, where Arsenal still play to this day, although they moved stadiums in 2006. The Woolwich was dropped from the name in 1915, and the club became Arsenal Football Club. The club's okay. nickname is the Gunners. The first mentions of the Gunners in reference to Arsenal were actually from opponent newspapers in the late 19th, early 20th century. Hmm. The nickname was possibly used to describe the Arsenal fans who carried explosives that they would set off during matches. <laughs> Being that the fans worked at a military production facility, this makes a little bit of sense. The club was actually more commonly nicknamed the Reds in its early days for playing in the color red. But okay. over the years, the fans and club names sort of became synonymous, and the club was referring to themselves as the Gunners by 1910 at the absolute latest. Way to, way to, press way, to more... way to own it. Way to own it. Yeah. Way to own it. You get a nickname from your opponent, and then you just own it. Exactly. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Yep. You don't give yourself a nickname. Yeah. That's how. It and that's how nicknames work has always included some type of cannon or cannons dating all the way back to the very first crest used in 1888. The cannons come from the military influence in the borough of Woolwich, which we've already discussed is where Arsenal was created. In 1949, Arsenal revealed their most well-known crest, the Victoria Concordia Crescent or VCC Crest. Victoria Concordia Crescent is Latin for victory grows out of harmony, and I sincerely apologize for that butchering pronunciation of Latin. It was written by Harry Homer, the program editor, in 1948. The club liked the motto and officially adopted it by 1949, along with launching a new crest. The new crest featured Arsenal in a Gothic-style typeface, had a westward-facing cannon, the borough of Islington's coat of arms, where the club's home stadium was located in Highbury, and ermine, which are those weird-looking snowflake things all over the crest. 
Okay. The club more or less used this same crest from 1949 until 2002 with some slight variations over the years. In 2002, the club was constructing a new stadium, the Emirates, where they currently play today. And they were transitioning into the modern world of soccer, which has a very heavy business and commercial focus. Why is he using soccer? It's an American dude. I know, but man, you're talking about football, dude. Like, yeah. I, 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 I try not to make that mistake. Even in my original video documenting this journey, I made sure not to use the word soccer. That's crazy. That's crazy. With as much, because you know he's a fan. Look at look at all the shit behind him. Yeah, and that's that's what we call it here in the states is soccer. But you know it's what? It's just though? how we do. You know what though? There's a lot of American teams here. Yeah, Phil Philadelphia Union. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's Chicago up there, top right. I think uh, to the right of his head on the top is DC United. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, anyway, proper football. We know it. We know it that it is proper football. Or soccer. Or or. <laughs> Oh, that's what happens yes. when you bring me onto this yes. channel. It's all right, I, I stir it's shit right. up. It's all right. It needs to be stirred up. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get, let's keep going. Yep. The club wasn't able to trademark the VCC crest that they had been using for the past 50 years. And not being able to trademark a crest or logo for a business is financial suicide. So the club was forced into changing to this really simplified logo of Arsenal with the huh. cannon that we still see being used today. One last point of note is that the Art Deco crest you will sometimes see, this includes the intertwined letters A and C with a soccer ball in the middle. The A referencing Arsenal, the soccer ball representing football, which is what England and most of the rest of the world call soccer, and C representing club. So Arsenal Football Club. It was created by Herbert Chapman, who we'll discuss in a little bit, and a man named Claude Waterloo Ferrier in 1925 to rebrand the club and usher in a new era for Arsenal. Hmm. Arsenal have had many important events in the club's history, but I'd like to discuss two of them right now. Tottenham fans, if any of you are watching, you may want to mute this segment. In the 1914-15 season, which was the final season before the First World War, Arsenal finished in fifth place in the second division. The professional league stopped for World War I. Play resumed in 1919, with the first division being extended by two clubs from 20 to 22 teams. Most people expected that the two clubs that would have been relegated, who were Chelsea and Tottenham, to remain in the first division, along with the top two teams from the second division, Derby and Preston, being promoted. At the Football League's annual general meeting on March 10, 1919, League Chairman John McKenna made a passionate speech to the election committee recommending Arsenal's promotion ahead of Tottenham Hotspur, even though Arsenal finished fifth in the second division in that 1914-15 season. His speech concluded that Arsenal deserved a higher standing in the Football League, having joined the Football League in 1893, 15 years before Tottenham Hotspur. The Gunners won the vote Ooh. by 10 votes, and it's still not known to this day whether Arsenal's owner at the time influenced McKenna's speech or not. Whatever the truth, more than 90 years later, Arsenal are the only club to have remained in the top flight of English soccer every season since the Football League resumed after World War I. Wow. They're also the only club to have achieved promotion not based on playing merit during this time. Oh, shit. The Hold next on. most important of Yikes. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. Good for them. <laughs> but, <laughs> my God. If I was, if I was, I could see how that could make a lot of people salty. Oh, yeah. I could see that. And, that, oh. And, and brew a very tough oh, rivalry. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. We're going to keep going, but I get it. I get that hatred against them, at least. I yeah. get that. Wow. Event that I'd like to discuss happened in the 2003-2004 Premier League season. That season, Arsenal won 26 matches and drew 12 in the Premier League to finish the season undefeated. They were the first English team to finish the season undefeated since the 1888-1889 season and thus were nicknamed the Invincibles. The club clinched the title with a draw on April 25, 2004 at White Hart Lane, home of, you guessed it, their rivals Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> For their achievement, Arsenal were awarded a special gold Premier League trophy, and their unbeaten run actually stretched 
49 matches wow. from May 7, 2003 to October 24, 2004. Wow. The Invincibles Dang were a gum. legendary team of the modern era. Arsenal supporters are nicknamed Gooners, which is not actually a play on the club's nickname, at least not completely. Back in the 1970s, when hooliganism was prevalent throughout England, the Arsenal hooligan firm was called by some opposing firms as the Goon Squad in a derogatory kind of way. The Arsenal firm decided to adopt the Goon Squad nickname as a source of pride. Naturally, as the Goon Squad was closely associated with a team nicknamed the Gunners, this evolved into the firm being called Gooners. As hooliganism has died out, at least firms have died out, all fans have kind of adopted the nickname of Gooners. So, so it's important. Arsenal have had... Don't, don't give these guys nicknames. They run with it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it, nickname you give them, <laughs> they're going to run with it. It empowers them. Yeah. So just don't nickname them. Wow, okay. Wow, okay. So that was their that was their um hooligans. Yeah. They actually had a organized hooligan squad. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. All right. Had many incredible players throughout their history that there's really too many to really give details about. Here are just some of their names and a little details and I'm going to skew a bit more modern in my naming. Thierry Henry was a club legend and record goal scorer for the club. Dennis Bergkamp was an inventive striker who had impeccable control and scored amazing wonder goals. Tony Adams was nicknamed Mr. Arsenal because he spent his entire 22-year playing career with Arsenal. Wow. Patrick Vieira was a combative center midfielder who was an astounding physical presence that combined incredible technical skills on the ball. And Ian Wright was a lethal goal scorer who helped the club win many trophies. And like I said, there's been many other great players in Arsenal's history. We just don't have time to cover them in this video. The club's two most important managers in their entire history are without a doubt Herbert Chapman and Arsene Wenger. Chapman was the very first modern manager in the world of soccer. He was a revolutionary and was the first person to control all aspects of running a soccer club. From player signings to training to match day tactics and running the club as a business, Chapman was in charge. Wow. He was also okay. one of the first tactical pioneers in the world of soccer, inventing the WM formation. He was hired by Arsenal in the summer of 1925 and set the club on a path of dominance in the 30s after winning their first FA Cup in 1930. Unfortunately, he caught pneumonia in January of 1934 while watching an Arsenal third team match and passed away shortly thereafter. Oh, damn. Oh, Chapman's man. leadership enabled Arsenal to continue their domination after his death, though, until World War II stopped the league. Arsene Wenger is the other most important manager in the club's history. He's a divisive figure for Arsenal fans these days, but his resume is incredibly impressive. He was appointed manager on October 1st, 1996 from the awesomely named Japanese club Nagoya Grampus 8, where he was fairly unknown to English fans. He was a tactical pioneer, although not quite the level of Herbert Chapman. He did usher in a new age of possession-based, beautiful passing, and flowing attacking soccer to the Premier League. He guided Arsenal to their first ever Premier League title in the 97-98 season, which was his first full season in charge. He also won the title in the 01-02 season before making history in the 03-04 season as manager of the Invincibles. Got he it. has won seven FA Cups, a record for any manager, wow. and was voted manager of the year three times. He's Arsenal's longest ever serving manager and doesn't always get recognized for his efforts in managing the club's transition to a new stadium and into the modern age of soccer as big business. Now let's discuss huh. Arsenal's three main rivals, Chelsea, Manchester United, and Tottenham Hotspur. The Chelsea rivalry dates back many years with each squad going through cyclical success, but the modern rivalry has really heated up. This is due to three things. First of all, both clubs are based in London. Second of all, Chelsea's other historic rivals of Fulham and QBR have faded from prominence in recent years. And third of all, Roman Abramovich's acquisition of Chelsea in 2003 and subsequent influx of billions of pounds into the club turned them into a rival title contender overnight. Oh, okay. Now let's talk about the second rival, Manchester United. Manchester United and Arsenal each have a glorious history in English soccer, but it was always one or the other winning titles while the other faded to mid-table obscurity or worse. That was until Arsene Wenger took over Arsenal in 1996 and built the club into title contenders. Manchester so United were the... It's, so it's kind of like 
how the Patriots were always in the talks of the Super Bowl. Yeah, Just yeah. like, okay, when, fine. It's whoever else in the NFL is going to play against the Patriots. Yeah, yeah. That was <clears throat> when Tom Brady was there. When Tom Brady yeah. left, then yeah, it was but, totally a different story. Yeah. And, but so that's that's kind of it. They're like, oh, fuck. All right. Those, so these are the main two contenders. Mm-hmm. Okay, which which you you develop a natural rivalry with, right? Right. And if you're always going to meet each other, you're going to always have that rivalry. Right, right. And I I guess the other team in that discussion would be the Broncos with Peyton Manning. There. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it was yes. those two at the time were to us what Man United and Arsenal were to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I, I personally, if I was a, a Arsenal fan, I would. My main rival would be Tottenham. I mean, we're about to get to that. Yeah, yeah I know. But I just like, that's the one. That's the, hey, oh. oh. I'm an in squad at the time, winning many Premier League titles in those early years, and they continued to be a title contender. Famously, Roy Keane, who was Manchester United's combative center midfielder, and Patrick Vieira, Arsenal's own combative center midfielder, had some epic battles in the late 90s and early 2000s. That made this rivalry into one of the most fierce and intense rivals at that time. Finally, Arsenal's third and most intense rival is Tottenham Hotspur. That go. rivalry began when Arsenal moved to Highbury in 1913, which was only about five miles from where Tottenham Hotspur played oh. at White Hart Lane. The rivalry really escalated with that famous vote in 1919, with Arsenal being promoted to the first division at the expense of Tottenham Hotspur. Years of animosity between the clubs and important matches being played only a few miles apart have really helped this North London derby grow into one of the most intense rivalries in the Premier League. It's also helped that Spurs have been building a more formidable squad the last five years or so. Now let's discuss some stats and records for Arsenal as of February 2018, which is when we are recording this video. Arsenal have spent 101 seasons in the top flight, including more than 90 consecutive seasons. The club has 30 major trophies, including an English record 13 FA Cups, 13 First Division or Premier League titles, two League Cups, and they're in the final of this year's League Cup, so they could be adding to that tally, and one UEFA Cup Winners' Cup. The club's record First team appearance holder is David O'Leary with 772 appearances. Wow, right. The club's record goal scorer is Thierry Henry with 228 goals. The club's record transfer purchase was Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang from German club Borussia Dortmund on January 31st, 2018 for about £56 million. And the club's record transfer sale was Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain to Liverpool FC on August 31st, 2017 for about £35 million initially with a potential £5 million in add-ons. And one last fun fact for you about Arsenal FC, the club has only been relegated one time in their entire history, which was after the 1912-1913 season when the club dropped from the first division to the second division. So there you have it. So a bit of that's, that's that. So you can there you go. lose your, your seed. Yeah, yeah. The, and, and what I learned in the last one, well, just, just from talking to our, our friends of the channel, um, you drop three, you gain three. So there's a change of three every year. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of cool to have these possible underdogs go all the way. But, I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy, man. Um, yeah. is there, do you think there's anything else in this thing? I think he's just going to ask All people right. to subscribe to his channel, which we, right. we have already done yep. here. So. All right, cool, man. Yeah. Well, you know, let let me know if this is I, – I understand this is probably a little bit dated, a little bit. Yeah, it's 2018. And 2018. It's, and it's 2023 right now. Yeah. <clears throat> so we, I, I get that. Um, well, with that olive branch being said, let me know if this is something you would want to see, this kind of journey, this kind of backstory. Um, cause he's done a pretty good job. This guy's mm -hmm. done a pretty good job on all the clubs. Yeah. And this is a good way for me to dive into this. Yeah, I mean, we're about to find out if he's done real good about it. Yeah, Maybe, we not will. Not reserve judgment. Let's let yeah. the commenters decide that, yes, man. Which is important because that is how I, uh, did the World Cup journey. Because uh -huh. I read the comments and that's how I gained my, some of my knowledge in the this is from you guys. There you go. Not just this guy. Just from you guys. I listen to you guys first and foremost because you guys are plugged in more than, let's say, him. There you so, go. Just so like anyway, that. Yeah, guys. Well, thanks, Spencer. 
uh, for being on the channel. Of course. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and thanks to Embrace the Suck for hosting the channel. Exactly. <laughs> anytime. You're yeah. welcome anytime. Yes. I mean, it's your channel, too. Well, so, yeah, well, kind well, of. Still. Uh... Still. 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 <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys. Much love. Uh, make sure you unplug and do something legendary. All right? See y'all next time. Later. I don't know where it is. It's over there. Just uh, hit the stop record button. <laughs>